you're eating right, you're moving your body, but the scale is stuck. I get it, it's frustrating and it can make you feel like your body is working against you. But let me tell you something, your body isn't broken. There's always a reason for a weight loss plateau. And today I'm going to help you find it and fix it. And please stick around because at the end, I'll reveal the one thing most people do that actually makes the plateau worse. If you're ready to break through, let's get into it. And for those of you who are new to my channel, I'm Dr. Tony Hampton, a board certified obesity and family medicine doc. And I'm on a mission to help you achieve metabolic health. And if you've been doing everything right but your weight won't budge, don't worry, this is completely normal. Your body your body is designed for survival, not weight loss. When you lose weight, your metabolism adjusts. It slows down, it increases your hunger hormones, and as crazy as this may sound, it even makes you move less without realizing it. But here's the good news. You can outsmart your body's stall tactics. Today we're going to go through 10 of the most common reasons why weight loss plateaus happen and exactly how to fix them. So let's go. But before we get into solutions, let's talk about why your weight has stopped moving. Your metabolism adapts because when you eat fewer calories, your body lowers energy output trying to conserve fat stores. Your hormones shift. Hormones like leptin, the satiety hormone drop, making you hungrier. While hormones like ghrelin, the hunger hormone actually increase. In addition, your body holds on to water when insulin or cortisol is elevated, making it easier for your body to retain water, masking fat loss. Now, now normally, your body prioritizes muscle over fat. But if you're in a severe calorie deficit or not eating enough protein, your body might be breaking down muscle for fuel instead of fat. So I'll stop my introductory comment so we can get to the heart of the matter. Let's go through the 10 biggest plateau busters so you can get back to losing weight. Number one, you're eating more than you think. You might think you're in a calorie deficit, but research shows most people underestimate their intake by 10 to 20%. Why does this happen? Because of hidden calories in things like oils, dressing, sauces, and nuts. Do you know anybody that can actually eat just a handful of nuts? I certainly don't. Not to mention the liquid calories from things like cream, sweeteners, or flavored drinks. And finally, many are eating portion sizes that are too large. The fix? Track for three days. Just to check your real intake. Use a food scale. Even small, miscalculations add up. This is typically an approach not necessary if you're keto or carnivore. However, when you get a weight loss, plateau, you need to consider this approach. Stick to whole foods as opposed to those keto-friendly products. They're more nutrient-dense and keep you full longer. Number two, your macros are off. Keto and low-carb diets work, but only if your fat, protein, and carb ratios are dialed in. The science, too much fat, you'll burn dietary fat instead of body fat. Too little protein, you'll lose muscle, which slows your metabolism. Too many carbs, especially the hidden ones, can lead to insulin spikes that will put the brakes on fat burning. The fix, eat at least 0.8 to 1.5 grams of protein per pound of lean body mass and some need more. Lower dietary fat slightly if weight loss is stalled and check for hidden carbs like those processed keto snacks, salsas, and sugar alcohols which can really add extra carbs. And if you're counting carbs by using net carbs where you subtract the sugar alcohols and fiber, I suggest you switch to total carbs instead. Number three, your metabolism metabolism has slowed down. We call this reverse dieting. If you've been dieting too long, especially under 1,200 to 1,500 calories per day, your metabolism may have downregulated. Why? Prolonged calorie restriction lowers thyroid hormones, free T3 and free T4. The body reduces non-essential energy use. You also burn fewer calories at rest. The fix. Take a diet break one to two weeks at maintenance calories. Reverse diet, gradually increase calories by 50 to 100 kilocalories per week. Cycle between weight loss and maintenance phases to prevent metabolic slowdown. These interventions may help you reset your metabolism. Number four, you're not moving enough and need to do NEAT. Your body may be subconsciously reducing movement to conserve energy. So what's NEAT? Not exercise activity thermogenesis. Calories burned outside of structured exercise. This can range from fidgeting to walking around your house and can help you burn extra calories throughout the day. The fix? Set a daily step goal. 
Aim for 7,000 to 10,000 steps. Stand up every hour. Sitting for long periods can definitely slow calorie burn. Increase movement in small ways. Take stairs, pace while on calls, and do household chores actively. Number five, you're not lifting weights. Muscle burns more calories at rest than fat. If you're losing muscle instead of fat, your metabolism slows down. The science? Every pound of muscle burns six to 10 calories per day at rest. Resistance training increases insulin sensitivity and helps burn more fat. To simplify what I just said, just know this. The more muscle you have, the more calories you'll burn. The fix? Strength train two to three times per week. Compound movements like squats, dead lifts and presses, prioritize progressive overload, meaning increase weight or reps over time, focus on protein timing, eat protein after workouts to maximize muscle growth. Number six, you're holding onto water weight. If the scale isn't moving but the clothes fit better, you might be losing fat but holding water. Common causes include excess sodium, high cortisol from stress, hormonal shifts, and increase muscle glycogen. The fix, stay hydrated. Water helps flush excess sodium. Manage stress because cortisol increases water retention. And track your progress with other measures of success like your abdominal circumference instead of just leaning on the scale. Number seven, you're overdoing fasting. Intermittent fasting works, but too much fasting can raise cortisol and slow metabolism. Why? Prolonged fasting can increase stress hormones. If you're already lean, extended fasting can actually cause muscle loss. The fix? Cycle fasting windows. Mix up 16-8 fasting with 24 fasting or even do OMAD, which is one meal a day. Ensure enough protein in your eating window. Listen to your body. If fasting is making you fatigue, adjust. Number eight, you're stress and sleeping deprived. You can have the perfect diet, work out consistently, and still be stuck at a weight loss plateau if your stress and sleep are out of balance. Why? Because your body's hormonal response to stress and lack of sleep can sabotage fat loss without you even realizing it. Here's the science behind stress and fat storage. Cortisol, the body's primary stress hormone, rises in response to both mental and physical stress, whether that's work, deadlines, family pressures, or even over-exercising. Chronically elevated cortisol causes increased fat storage, especially in the belly, which we call visceral fat, higher blood sugar levels, making your body more insulin resistant, and increased cravings for sugar and high carb foods. Now let's talk about the science behind sleep and metabolism. Sleep deprivation disrupts two key hormones. We've mentioned them already. Ghrelin, the hunger hormone, goes up, making you feel hungrier. And leptin, the satiety hormone, goes down, making you feel less full. The fix, prioritize seven to nine hours of sleep. Your body needs deep rest to regulate hormones. Create a bedtime routine, Dim the lights, avoid screens, and wind down with calming activities. Manage stress effectively. Try meditation, deep breathing, or journaling. Get morning sunlight. It helps regulate your circadian rhythm and improve sleep quality. Number nine, you're not eating enough electrolytes. Most people think weight loss is all about calories and exercise, but if your electrolytes are out of balance, you could be feeling sluggish, retaining water, and stalling your progress. Let's talk about why electrolytes matter for weight loss. Sodium, potassium, and magnesium are essential for hydration, nerve function, and energy metabolism. So low electrolytes can cause fatigue and brain fog, often mistaken for keto flu, muscle cramps and weakness, where your body struggles to function optimally, increased cravings, the brain confuses electrolyte depletion with hunger, and I definitely need to touch on why electrolyte deficiencies are common in a low-carb diet. See, insulin regulates sodium retention. When you cut carbs, insulin drops and the kidneys flush out sodium. This also causes potassium and magnesium magnesium losses, leading to fatigue, weakness, and even stalled fat loss. Less processed foods equals less sodium intake, and if you're not adding salt back, you might become deficient. And believe it or not, magnesium is required for over 300 enzymatic reactions, including insulin regulation and metabolism. A deficiency can increase stress hormones and make fat loss harder. The fix? Make sure to add salt to your meals. If you're eating whole unprocessed food, you might need 2,000 to 5,000 milligrams of sodium daily. Increase potassium intake. Avocados, meat, salmon, and leafy greens are great sources. Supplement with magnesium. Many people are deficient. 300 to 400 milligrams per day can help. And consider electrolytes. I personally use Keto Chow Salty, and I'll have a link in the video notes. So if you're feeling tired, weak, or struggling to lose weight, an electrolyte imbalance could be the missing link. Fix this 
and you'll feel and look much better. Number 10, the number one mistake that keeps you stuck. Most people panic and quit when the scale doesn't move. Fat loss isn't instant. It's happening behind the scenes. So here are the key takeaways. Weight loss is not linear. Trust the process. Focus on habits, not just the scale, and give changes at least two weeks before adjusting again. I am so happy that you made it to the end of the video. And I know this video didn't deal with every single weight loss plateau cause, which is why I need you to share any additional tips you may have in the video comments. And if this video helped you, like and subscribe, hit that bell, and do me one more favor. Share in the comments what your biggest weight loss struggle is. And while you're here, check out one of the videos on this screen so you can continue learning how to achieve metabolic health. Thanks for coming, and I can't wait to see you in my next video.